Hi, this is Chen Liu from FutureWay Technologies. Today, I'd like to talk about what could happen beyond zone namespace. We can start with the application side. Here, I present you the most widely used big data frameworks. We have the popular Hadoop, Spark, Hive, and Storm. Also, the promising ones like Flink and Hairy. If we go down to software stack, we can see they are supporting database or data stores like HBase, Cassandra, or the single node ones like RocksDB and LevelDB. For the distributed ones, the underlying distributed storage could be Hadoop, HDFS, Kafka, Pulsar, and finally, they are backed by native file system like ext4, xfs, betafs, or zfs, those journaling file systems. Let's take a popular RocksDB and dive into details. I'm going to focus on the write flow. For every write, RocksDB first passes data onto a write I had a log. <clears throat> also store in the volatile mem table. When the mem table, mem table become full, <coughs> it will become the immutable mem table waiting to be flushed onto persistent media. The flush the data will be stored in SAT files called static stored table files. Those files are referred as L0 SSD files, typically around 10 megabyte or so. Is covering the whole range, the whole key range. When there are enough L0 files, RocksDB will merge sort those files into multiple SST files, L1 SST files, each file covering a particular key range. For example, this one is A to E, and F to M, and X to Z. Those L0 files typically hundreds of megabytes in size. The merge sort process is called compaction. The compaction process will happen for the rest of the levels and some files can even be several gigabytes in size. As we can see here, WAL is a log. All SAT files are logs and those files vary in size. Now let's take a look at Kafka. Kafka is distributed streaming platform. Kafka cluster allow producer to publish or write and consumer to subscribe or read streams of events. The events are also stored persistently and reliably by the storage layer called broker. The stream of event are organized into topics. Let's take a topic as example, which is the my topic. So this my topic is replicated among three brokers, broker zero, broker one, and the broker two. The, the topic is also partitioned into partitions. For example, in here we have my topic zero, my topic one, and my topic two. Those partitions are normally implemented using directories. For each partition, Kafka will only append mm, at the end. So essentially, this is a log. And this partition is also organized into segments implemented using files. So each segment is essentially a log plus index file. For uh, Kafka will only append at the end of the last or latest segment file. Once the old segment is no longer needed, it will be deleted by the system is called a truncate. Anything in between is available for consumption. As you can see here, 
partition is a log. Segments are logs. When we append to a partition, we create segments append to that segment. And if we want to truncate a partition, we delete all this segment. So the HDFS is also write once plus append and truncate capabilities. If we take the nearest pulsar, the storage abstraction is also log based. Say where I'm going here, right? If we move further, let's think about what's supporting those logs into in the, on individual nodes. It is the native file system. Now the question is, is native file system the best for those applications? Let's find out. This is the paper published in SOSP 2019, titled File Systems Unfit as Distributed Storage Backends. Lessons from 10 years of Ceph evolution. Ceph started with EBOFS. Then in 2009, they switched to file store on BetterFS. They hook up into file system internals, try to improve the performance. Then used the user space right hand log on XFS in 2012. In 2015, they experimented with RocksDB on joining file system, which is called New Store, but that did not go into production. In 2017, they switched to Blue Store. Let's take a look at the Blue Store. In Ceph, the client talks to multiple storage nodes. Each store node is attached with multiple storage devices. Each device is served by instance of OSD. OSD stands for uh, Object Storage Demo. With Blue Store, the OSD works directly on raw storage device, bypassing the file system. The metadata is managed by RocksDB, but RocksDB uses logs for storage abstraction while a raw storage device provide a block interface. How do they do that? This is when the BlueFS kicks in. The BlueFS operates in user space, turning a raw device into a log interface. Then voila, everything runs on raw device. Bypassing the kernel file system, they claim twice the performance improvements. And the most impressive part is they stabilized the code base in two years, not the usual 10 years for a full-fledged file system. Due to the simplicity and the limited semantics. So the key takeaways are the database distributed storage are using log structure approach to manage data, including metadata. The log approach here is defined as append only immutable, delete as a whole. Logs vary in size from several megabytes to hundreds of gigabytes. Most existing data processing framework are still using native file system, which is demonstrated to be unfit. The reasons are the native file systems is slow in read, modify, write. And if we're using write head log on journaling file system, that the issue of double writes. And native file system is slow to adopt new hardware like zone namespace. <clears throat> Speaking of zone namespace, let's review what it is. A zone namespace or ZNS device will divide the whole LBA range into multiple fixed size zones, normally several hundreds of megabytes. Within each zone, we can only write sequentially, namely write where the right pointer is and the right point only increase monotonically. When a zone is full or closed, it will become immutable until the right point pointer is reset. We normally map the reset right pointer action to the SSD's blob erase command, essentially delete the whole zone. Also, 
by setting different zone mapping configurations, the zone size can be large or small, depending on the number of flash die it spans. There's also a command called append, which enable multiple outstanding updates to the same zone, greatly improve the write bandwidth. The caveat is that it's a nameless write, meaning the append doesn't specify the address instead of, instead the written address is returned by the device. As we can see here, zone name space improve performance, like increase the bandwidth by reducing the write amplification factor, improve the tail latency with zone isolation and reduce the GC. Overall, zone reduced TCO by enabling mass over provisioning, use less DRAM, reduce write amplification factor, and the adoption of QRC medium. It's all very good. But can we do more? Can we do better? Let's compare the application log and zones. Both are append only, both are immutable until delete. But the application size zone has variable NAND, while the zone has fixed NAND. Also, the application log update may not align with the sector while the update in zone has to be sector aligned. Lastly, the application log is determined by the directory and file name, while the zone uses ZSLBA. This means we need a file system to map the name to an LBA. Can we map my application log natively onto the zones? Answer is yes, there are two possible appro approaches. <coughs> we can map log <coughs> into zones. For example, uh, many logs into one zone or one log span multiple zones. The downside of this approach is first, we have internal fragmentation. Second, due to shared zones, we have to introduce garbage collection. Third, we still need a naming service to map a name to an LBA. Another approach is to extend the zone to support application logs with uh, the following extensions. First, variable size zones. Second, byte level append. Third, <coughs> naming services. We call this ZNS name the log extension or ZNS unlock for short. Essentially, we extend the zone concept to be named by the appendable variable size linear space. By named, we allow each zone to be named and the map name to a unique zone ID. Also, each zone can span multiple number of flash dies. For a small zone, like zone ID three, you can only small two zones. For a large zone, like zone ID two, you can span all the flash dies. For byte apple, byte level append, let's take a look at the example. We have four appends, each is smaller than a sector. You can stage all the appends in a buffer until the buffer contains enough data to fill a sector. At such point, we can flush the buffer onto an actual land. Any questions here? <clears throat> Let's take a look how to deploy RocksDB over ZNS and log. For the right ahead log, we avoid read modify write by leveraging the byte level append, thus improving the write ahead log write throughput. For the variable size zones, let's say we have 64, 65,000 small zones. 
and the 4,000 medium zones, and let's say 5, 12 large zones, we can map the L0, L1, S35 onto small zones. And the very uh, the L2 S35 onto medium zones and the very large last level S35 onto large zones. Because there's no zone sharing in this approach, we can reduce the overall right amplification. Lastly, you can directly use a name like L0 F2M 010 SST or name like L2 X2Z 005 SST as the zone names, eliminating the file system, the file name to the LBM mapping from the native file system, making the mapping fast and robust. Further, ZNS analog enables more NDP. For example, it allows transparent compression of the zones, meaning that we can maintain the original logic offset with a zone. We all know that large file size means better compression. Now the drive can compress the whole zone of the artificial block size defined by the file system. Also, we can offload some of the RocksDB's operations like compaction of SST files because one zone is one SST file. We don't need native file system in direction also, the compaction can be self-contained within the device. We can leverage the huge internal bandwidth of the SSD. Additionally, we can search multiple SSD on the device or even wildcard search, which is currently not supported by RocksDB's prefix or normal boom filter. For Kafka, we can also offload the matching and aggregation operations. ZNS analog is also applicable to persistent memory. As we know that persistent memory is natively byte addressable, so byte appendable. Also, the memory allocator will dictate the size of the allocated memory region. So if we add a naming service, we can implement ZNS analog on persistent memory easily. This way we can provide the same, same semantics on both persistent memory and SSD. For example, giving a RocksDB with SSD files on tiered zones, we can map the SSD files of hotspot, like the ones shown in blue, onto persistent memory zones. Now we have a very high performing RocksDB that's also cost effective. So in conclusion, ZNS analog can bridge the semantical gap between application and SSD which traditionally was blurred by the file system. Namely, we introduced three extensions, named byte appendable variable size. ZNS analog enables less write amplification, more log write performance, and provide more flexible and robust naming service. ZNS analog will lower the technical barrier for near data processing Lastly, ZNS analog concept is applicable to persistent memory. Thank you.